I see something I gotta do. Broke my number one rule. Look at that. Gotta go over every bolt. I can do that. And I'll be right back. A few moments later. Better. So I don't want to over rev it yet. I don't have any miles on it at all. shift indicator definitely got a little bit steeper rake on a triple tree column here it's definitely more of a sporty feel so I'm not sure if you guys know but the steeper the rake angle the more positive sport feeling it is this actually feels more like a sport bike than a dirt bike definitely can't do a zero to 60 of course not till we get broken in a little bit let me get at least 100 miles or so on it pretty nice actually i like the way it rides with the overhead cam which is what I thought it would be is it definitely has a smoother mid-range to higher rpm pull the Hawk and all the other CG style motors with the push rod style overhead valves but it, the cam is actually a push rod style those have a lot more grunt low end grunt and then they kind of fall off around mid-range. This one here definitely has a decent amount of low-end RPM pull, but the higher RPM, you can definitely feel it's still pulling into the higher RPMs. Of course, I can't go all the way into them yet because I'm not broken in, but I will. In the future videos, I'll definitely have some zero to 60 times top speed, all that. Oh yeah. Man, I so want to do a 0-60 to 60 time now. This is going to be a fun little bike. It feels really light because it is actually lighter than the other bikes. It's kind of in between a Magician and a Hawk size. I did let a little bit of air out of the rear shock because it was very stiff, but it actually feels pretty good right now. It's absorbing the bumps really good. It's a little loud. It's about as loud as the new Hawk DLX. It's definitely a decent little supermoto, Chinese supermoto. Because it does have the feel of a sport bike. It handles well. I don't know if my fuel gauge is working yet, but I'll put some gas in it and make sure. I know I have at least at least a half or three quarters of a gallon. Scout squirrel. Definitely's got that rap rap sound to it. it sounds pretty nice. Some good bumps and see how it absorbs.
I am jet. I did jet it. Someone lost a glove. Ah, oh, this is pretty nice on the twisties. Halloween bike, Pumpkin Apollo. This is an engine vent tube. Cut the plastic cable in the first ride and keep the vent tube. What? What does that mean? Very, very little, so that might be stainless. It's well, that's that's. seals. Got okay. three link suspension. Well that's on. I guess I should put the handlebars on. Locking nuts. Tight. That's what she said. Take that out and roll the wheel on. Just don't squeeze the brake because there's nothing in it. If I can get a little bit of weight off of that front. So this and that. I gotta go up a little bit more. Perfect. Pick stand. Now we're getting somewhere. Orange for Halloweeny. Got brakes. Cool little dash. Little tiny. Uh -huh. So that's held in with that. That's alright. Blade leaves and motor rider shows up. Good timing. That's done. It's got a bearing on both sides. Huh.
That's exactly three quarters. Pretty much right on. Starting to drizzle. I like to use rubber too. That'll stop stuff from vibrating off. I kind of like the looks of the plastic. Make sure the other side's tight. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a tough one to get that back one. Here comes the rain. Oh, I got it. Got him. <laughs> oh, yeah, that clicks into there. Like that. So you always put the positive on first, and then the negative. There it is. There it is. Shift lever, like this, right? Now that side panel. They're all number 36. Huh. Smart idea to use lock nuts because of all the vibrations and everything. Huh, not bad. Not too shabby. Yeah. Damn rain. I could see that getting mashed up into there. That wouldn't be good. Damn, all done. Can't even take it for a ride. You ready? Seems to put some gas. Here we go. Broke it already. Mm -hmm. Bought it. 
Oh, one. the kickstand. Damn it. Good thinking. That's a hard seat, isn't it? That's thick. Not a bad looking bike. Yeah, probably gonna have to jet it. I just want to point out that this bike does recommend 93 octane. It also recommends SJ 10W40 engine oil. For more information, look in the description of this video or go to MotoCheese.com. Carb's got to come out. Hmm. It might be easier to remove the carb from here. Of course, it's hot. Man. Well, they don't want you to take this apart. But if that's the case, make it so it runs out of the box. Bruh. Let's see what main is in this. 109. I'm going to put a 105. I'm not going to leave this one in here with the other weirdo things. I don't know. I don't get it. Before I forget, when I showed you to float upside down, the way you're supposed to do it is when that just touches the spring like this, that has to be level with that. Before I was doing this, it's supposed to just touch the float. That puts the weight of the floats on it, so it's going to be inaccurate. But when I showed you, I just I was talking and I didn't show you how to actually do it. You got to do it like this. And I did open up the mixture screw. That gave me a little bit of a struggle because it had a brass cap. I didn't turn my glasses on. This is definitely a bit of a jigsaw puzzle here. It did come out though. Oh, there it is. Yep, wow. There's only one way. Now I'm going to highlight some of the good stuff and the bad stuff that I found while assembling the bike. Overhead cam with the adjusters, like a Honda. And it's got an air charged rear shock, adjustable. And it looks like three length suspension. 
It's even got a different frame on it than the rest of them. And it's got a little subframe on it, which is nice. Inverted forks again. It's got a kickstand switch. It's got a 530 chain on this one, which is a bigger chain. Carbureted. Speed controls on the back wheel this time. Flat seat. Just has an on and off, no reserve for the little dinky, looks like one and a half gallon tank. Looks like it's got a cable for the choke. The regulator for the charging systems up front there, in front of the motor. Of course it has its pollution. There is no counterbalance. The exhaust is stainless steel. It has a 130 by 70 17 rear tire. 100 by 80 17 front tire. Not too bad a tread, 50-50 tread. Front and back, same tread. So if you're looking for a Chinese supermoto, this one ain't bad. Definitely handles more like a sport bike than any of the other Chinese bikes I've ever ridden with that steering rig being so much steeper. The seat's pretty hard, so you're not gonna be able to ride too long. The suspension's not too bad, a little stiff, but it absorbs well. Not too shabby. Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products used are in the description and on MotoCheese.com. Thanks for watching.